Hi, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you one of the most, if not the most important steps to any hard surface installation there is. Stick around and see what it is. Okay, so as you can see, we have a whole bunch of sawdust. This is just like your common, uh, common old new construction site. You, you got sawdust everywhere. You can see all the white stuff all over the floor. That is sawdust. Look over in your corners, there's just a buildup of sawdust. There is uh, just garbage everywhere. There's wire clippings uh, from the electricians. You know, our nemesis in the trade, they always seem to leave their clippings everywhere. However, in order to install some solid surface flooring of any type, whether it be glue down, click together, or uh, any type, uh, nail down hardwood or anything, the floor needs to be absolutely spotless. That way when you do, especially on a glue down, because anything there is going to telegraph through, and if it is a click together, you're going to hear the sawdust and stuff crunching underneath of your, whether it be laminate, LVP, your nail down hardwood, whatever it may be, your subfloor needs to be absolutely spotless. And I'm going to show you how I achieved that. You guys might have seen here while back on the uh, video that I did where I actually cut open a piece of vinyl that was installed. And the title of that video was Dissecting the Lack of Floor Prep. And I'll, I'll leave a, a little teaser click up in the corner there. However, in this video, I want to show you how I get my floors absolutely spotless for any type of solid surface flooring. Okay, first off is the type of broom that you're using. Um, I'll show you a type of broom that I do not recommend and it is it's this big wide uh, it is definitely an angled broom and it's big and wide and you would think wow that's going to do really good well uh, always check your bristles these bristles are so soft whenever you sweep with you know, the black ones on the outside right there are actually a little stiffer but these center bristles are so soft whenever you sweep they're not going to they're not going to do the job required, okay? This is right here is the broom that I am currently using. It took me forever to find a good broom. Once I moved here back to Tennessee in Tucson, I had a certain store where I would go get uh, all of my sweet brooms, and you guys might have seen them, the little red quickie brooms is what they was called. If I ain't mistaken, they was by Mr. Clean, and I think I got them at the dollar store, as a matter of fact. They was just like the cheap old dollar store brooms but that was the best for sweeping around the edges of your room. And <clears throat> this broom right here, I don't know that if you can tell or not, this has a whole lot stiffer bristles. It has a whole lot stiffer bristles than this right here. While it does still have an angle on it right there, it's not quite as dramatic as an angle. Look at the size difference. Look right there. Look how much wider this one is than this one that's one reason i don't like this it is too big and too bulky to be doing the job that i do okay i don't need this for sweeping around the edges and that's exactly what i use these little sweet brooms for is sweeping around the edges this might be okay for a housewife in the kitchen or something definitely not for the construction guy definitely not for a floor guy okay this little narrow angled broom is what you're going to look for so if you'll notice the bristles are really nice and fine, that's going to get all of the fine debris, dust and everything like that from around the edges. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my little sweet broom here. That's what I call these little ones. This is a sweet broom. The big broom is a push broom. So I'm going to take this little sweet broom right here and I'm going to go ahead and sweep this area right here. And I'll show you, even though I've had almost 30 years of sweeping, I consider myself a fairly good sweeper. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sweep the best that I can and then I'll show you the results that's coming just from strictly using a push broom, okay? I mean a sweep broom. So a lot of guys will only use this and think that this is going to be good enough to use and just sweep the floor like this and go ahead and install their solid surface thinking that using one of these rooms is going to be good enough and they're going to install right over it, okay? So I got news for you. This is not going to do it and I'll show you in just a second.
Okay, so I've done this entire corner here just with this little sweet berm, and I want to show you the pile I swept up and how clean this floor appears to the naked eye, okay? Okay, so that right there is the pile that I swept up. It's a pretty daggum good pile. I got that just out of that corner right there. I'm going to get really close to that floor again and let you see just how it looks to the naked eye. Again, there is that huge pile that I swept up out of this corner. So now this is the original, this right here. See here, look here. This is the corner that I swept right here. I want you to get a really good look. It looks really good, okay, to the look, okay? Okay, so you guys may have seen me use this old, rickety, old looking push firm in a lot of my videos. The thing looks like it's 100 years old. It's technically not 100 years old. It's probably about 50 years old. All joking aside, I got this from a gentleman that was a principal in the 70s from uh, elementary school and when he left the elementary school in the 70s he actually took this uh, broom with him from the janitor's closet so this is a regular janitorial push broom and I want to point some things out about this little broom so you can see this is all wadded up and stuff like that I have used this broom so much in the past few years that I've had it however if you will look look at those bristles right there those bristles are so fine so close together so thin they absolutely get the job done no doubt about it okay so what looked like a nice sweep job a while ago we're going to sweep now with this push broom and i recommend that everyone that that don't exclude anyone everyone to find themselves an awesome push room okay uh if, if you don't know where you might find one at lowe's and stuff like that those are not good enough that uh they are basically for sweeping off driveways and stuff like that you are not going to find a good push broom like this at a lowe's or home depot or something like that tools for flooring has one i think it's about two foot wide and it looks like it's two pieces here like this like a foot here and a foot here and it looks like it would be an absolutely awesome push broom whenever this one does finally wear out or something i will uh i'll be trying that one but i probably will not wear this out for the rest of my career and i'll tell you what this is the only the third broom i've ever had in my installation career as far as push brooms i had one that i literally wore down so where I used my uh, first and original push broom so much, the bristles were only about a half inch long right here in the front before I got rid of it and decided to chalk it up and get me another one. I actually let a guy borrow it one time. He said, he's like, hey, you got a push broom? I was like, sure, and I handed it to him. He's like, here, he didn't want to use it, but the broom swept awesome, okay? Okay, so a little bit of broom 101 there. Now that we're done with that, I'm gonna go ahead and sweep this same exact corner now with my push broom that I just swept with my sweet broom just a while ago. And I'll show you the uh, pile of debris that we get up even after we've already swept it with a little sweet broom. And this is gonna be the importance of why a person needs a good push broom right here. That's right, you might say, I thought you said push broom and there you are pulling it. That's because I get it away from the edges with my big broom. And I'll, I'll get more into that in just a second, okay? And I want to point something out. I'll do that here in just a second. So, already, I'm going to stop right there. So I don't want to get too far along. I'll show you what I got already just out of that little bit. So you see that right there? That is already a good bit of debris. See that? You could not even see that. It looks good and everything else using my little sweet broom. However, that's the importance of using a nice big push broom, okay? Okay, now with all that being said, I wanna show you guys exactly how I use each broom and how I get the floor plenty clean enough for any solid surface floor, okay? Okay, so uh, I see it so many times somebody will sweep They'll put your broom down like that and sweep directly out. That is not going to get in the crack 
right here between the sheetrock. However, there ain't sheetrock here, but it's not going to get in the crack of the sheetrock and the subfloor right there. So doing this is not going to do no good, even if you sweep uh, a foot and a half or two feet away from the wall, okay? You're still leaving debris in the crevice right there, okay? So this is what I do, and this is what I stress to every single one of my helpers to use my broom sideways just like that this gets underneath the sheetrock at that particular angle right there and i never will go long strokes like that okay after so much of that right there stuff is going to start falling out the back of the broom okay it's very important to do short little strokes at a nice angle notice my broom is almost i'm not doing it like that okay by no means i'm angling it almost flat with the wall so that it's gonna fit underneath the sheetrock and pull stuff out. I'm doing strokes maybe about six inches or so, six or eight inches with my broom, okay? And that is going to get everything out, okay? Okay, so there's absolutely no need. I mean, absolutely no need. It's just a big waste of time for anybody, even though you do that, to take your little broom and sweep a foot and a half out away from the wall or a foot or whatever like that, okay? The purpose of using this around the wall is to get it real close around the edges, just far enough that I can take this push broom and go like that and grab anything that might be left, okay? So look here, about the width of the broom is gonna be more than enough, okay? You don't even need that much. So if I am sweeping like this right here, that's plenty, because I can get within an inch or so with my big broom right there and pull that stuff out, okay? So you only need to get a couple inches next to the wall before you can reach and grab it with the push broom, okay? So that is how I do it each and every single job. I'll take my little sweet broom. Notice I got the angle, the fat angle right here that angles down and I will stick that on the floor. Boom, boom, boom. Sweep like so. And I'm not too awful concerned about the corners because I'll explain that in a second. And then I'll take my sweet broom or my push broom, pull it out like that. Pull all the excess out far enough for me to get back here. Now hold on, watch this. Watch this right here. Before I step over onto this clean part that I just swept, I'm gonna take and tap my feet off. That way I'm not tracking this stuff over here. So I, I, swept, I swept far enough that way with the push broom to where I got a clean spot over here where I can get over here. Now I can start pushing the broom like it's meant to be used, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and just do this whole area right here. And also I wanna point out with this broom right here, did you notice whenever I was back sweeping like that, I'm doing short little strokes with the, with, even with the push broom, then when I come over here, I'm doing short little strokes again, okay? Like I said, the same principle, if you push like that right there, you're leaving so much stuff because the dirt is just going to start balling up and coming out the back of the broom. So by all means, don't take long strokes like that, okay? Short little strokes like that. Every couple minutes, every four or five times, whatever feels necessary, tap that off, tap that broom off, like so, knock all the dirt and debris off of it. Or else you're just going to keep tracking it back onto your clean floor, okay? So do you see the pile of debris right here? So obviously, whenever I get to that, I'm going to start dusting my broom almost every single push, okay? Because whenever I push into that pile like that, I'm definitely getting a lot of dirt and stuff in my bristle. So whenever you get to a big pile, you definitely need to tap that off. Watch this. Okay, see that? Now watch this. Look at all that that was stuck in the broom. Okay, I want to get up close to show you that one more time there. I want to make sure it's nice and clean so you're not thinking, wow, well, there's already a bunch of stuff in there. See, that's nice and clean there. No debris coming out of it. Now watch. Means I push that pile of debris there. Now watch the dirt come out of it. See that? So the more you push it, the more dirt you're pushing, the more times you need to tap the dirt out of your bristles, okay? Okay, so this is the final step to getting your subfloor nice and clean and getting the edges really good. And I want to point something out. I have a vacuum. I've talked about my vacuum before. 
I always use this hose on the vacuum a lot more than I do the actual vacuum. Look at this already. I, you, uh, you guys can look back at my videos and see how long I've had this. It ain't been a really long time. I want you to look. Okay, so look right there at the end of my vacuum hose. It used to be like a chisel. Now it's pretty much, I don't know, both sides are wore down. You can definitely see that this end right here gets drug on the floor so much like that right there at an angle like that, okay? So you can see all the marks on it right there where it hits tack strip and stuff like that where I always use this going around the edges of my room, uh, rather on solid surface, even most of the time on carpet. And that's what all these marks are from the tack strip, okay? The extension on this obviously pulls out. This wand right here goes on the end of that right there, okay? And this, look at the difference right here. I'm gonna show you this. So the end of each one of these, Look how small this is. Look how big this is. This is approximately, this is approximately half the size of this. So therefore, it's going to have twice as much suction. Okay. So uh, say you're outside watering the flowers or something like that, and your wife comes home with an armload of groceries and she's taking groceries in. You want to spray her with the water hose. You're not going to go psh, just like that because the water is just going to be running out the end of the hose okay you want to take and cut that off like this use your hand and then that creates a smaller passage for the water to come out therefore it's going to spray further it's going to have more pressure the exact same principle with both of these right here okay if i'm doing this i'm losing half the suction that i would get by using something smaller right here okay so by using the smaller chiseled end, I am doubling the suction power. I hope that makes sense, okay? Now, let's go ahead and go around the edges, and I'll show you exactly how I use these two. Okay, so just as I was talking about a while ago um, with increasing my suction power by adapting my chiseled edge onto my fat hose, you know, the example of using this as a water hose, the more you cut off, the stronger suction you have, the more pressure you have. So um, I want to do the exact same thing with this chiseled edge here on my hose, on my vacuum hose. So I don't want to go like this and just have it like flat like that. I want to turn that chiseled edge over to where you can see how this is all wore down right there. That's because I, wear, I use the chiseled edge facing on the ground. And what that does, that gives just a very very small gap for air to come, which dramatically increases the uh, suction of the vacuum, okay? So that's how I use my chiseled edge of the vacuum right there. And it, like I said, dramatically, I mean, probably 10 times the suction power rather than having it just wide open like that right there, having it capped off like that. This comes in especially handy around door jams and stuff like that where you want to pull stuff out from under the sheetrock, out from under the door jams and stuff like that, this is going to be perfect for that scenario. Angle this chiseled edge to where you've almost got it completely flush on the floor and you got just a crack. See that little crack right there? That is going to be some massive suction power. Okay, one more final thing that I did want to point out while I'm vacuuming, okay? I don't want to do a little bit suck the garbage up here, come forward, mm, suck the garbage up there, come forward, mm, suck the garbage up there. No, I want to go ahead and start on the opposite side of the room, wherever, and then just back myself up all the way around the room like that. And that's going to prevent me from walking forward, backing up, walking forward, backing up, walking forward, backing up. I can do one, one continuous motion all the way around the room by doing it like that. Let's go ahead and do it. There you go. Rather than going forward and back, forward and back, you're wasting a whole lot of time, you're wasting a whole lot of energy, you're wasting a whole lot of effort, okay? You're wasting a whole lot of your boss's money because he's paying you to get the job done, not to do stuff the way you want to do it. Do stuff efficiently for your boss, okay? He's paying you, 
do stuff how he says to do it, okay? So definitely back yourself up. Don't go forward, step back, forward, step back, forward, step back. Start here, work your way around the room, okay? That's the most efficient, that's the fastest, that is the best way to get your floor clean, okay? So again, I'm gonna go over these steps. One more time, make sure everybody got it. And because I'm right-handed, I always work my way around the left, around the room to the left. It don't matter if I'm tack stripping, it don't matter if I'm sweeping or whatever. So I'm gonna sweep around the edges to the left, like so, I'm gonna take my push broom, pull back, kick my feet off, push that the rest of the way, grab my vacuum when I'm done, back right around the room, okay? It should take a total. Now, and this is doing, this is doing some extra good and getting your job done right, okay? This should take you about five minutes, maybe that long, maybe even less, to get the room completely swept clean and ready for any kind of hard surface if you'll follow these steps right here okay i hope somebody learned something from this and by all means try it okay don't just take my word for it don't don't uh look at this video and say oh that's a bunch of baloney that's way too much work do it get used to doing it get in the rhythm of doing it and before you know it like i said three four five minutes and you can have a room spotless and get your job done like a professional nice and clean no garbage under your vinyl like i showed in that video just here recently you're going to get professional results by following these steps. Until next time, FBSB is out.